On February 25, 2021, former Delphi prosecutor Robert Ives did an interview with renowned talk show host Dr. Oz. I recently found a recording of this interview, which has been deleted from most online sites, including the network. Interestingly, Ives had some things to say about the unknown Delphi murder suspect regarding his thoughts on confessions, along with details pertaining to the VICAP system, which maintains the largest repository of major violent crime cases in the U.S., Court documents filed by the state prosecutor, Nick McClelland, have recently revealed that the accused, Richard Allen, has confessed and made statements to more than 27 people since he's been incarcerated. We first found out about these confessions at the court hearing held on June 15th, 2023. Testimony and statements by both the prosecution and the defense indicated that Allen had confessed to his wife, mother, mental health and medical professionals who worked at Westfield Correctional where he was being held, along with testimony by Warden John Gallipo regarding letters that Allen had written to him personally. Allen has made confessions and statements to 16 staff members, including IDOC guards and eight prison inmates. I found it interesting that Ives had been so intuitive all those years ago when he told Dr. Oz that inevitably, when people commit horrible crimes, they feel compelled to confess. Cause of death is still protected, which I understand. But what can you tell us about the actual crime scene with what you're allowed to share? Could this have been the work of a serial killer? Well, I think like most people, because the trail is not well known, it's not a big tourist spot, and because the bridge itself is something you wouldn't cross unless you were familiar with the area. And the bridge was abandoned 30 years ago. And when you see the person walking across it with his head down, it's because it's not safe to cross that bridge. The bridge was not part of the trail. The trail terminated at the bridge. And so most people, I believe, and most people in law enforcement thought it must be a local person because why would anybody be there? Why would you be familiar with that trail? But on the other hand, the crime is so, it's impossible to think of a motivation for the crime. You know, generally, when you have a murder in rural Indiana, Carroll County, the motive was obvious, the suspect was obvious, and in this case, the two girls were murdered, and as I've told people, the crime scene is very unusual, it's all very strange. And so while we certainly thought in the early days it would be solved in two or three days, now I have to wonder if it wasn't a, a semi-random crime of the sort that we occasionally have had in this country, where a person had an opportunity and they committed these murders, but still it doesn't make any sense for them to be there just outside of Delphi, Indiana. So without giving up details that could compromise the investigation, you say there's some unique physical aspects to the scene. And, and, and... Well, uh, as this four year anniversary has come up and some people have wanted to talk to me, it, it has made me think about something I've been concerned about. Besides the fact of the video and the audio, which is amazing evidence to have from a crime scene, as I've told people, if you had arrived at this crime scene where the girls' bodies were found, there were three or four physical characteristics of the crime scene that you absolutely would take pictures of. Now, law enforcement has good reasons why they don't want to release information. I am not involved in the investigation in any way. I just, I hope that people who are handling the investigation will consider whether perhaps it might be time to release some more of that information. So connections to other crimes and other places, or if someone had ever spoken to the perpetrator of this crime, perhaps it would give them a clue that they had learned something from the perpetrator. So just trying to connect these dots a little bit, if a another crime scene had some of these unique characteristics that are worth photographing. Would you, could you connect that and potentially think this is the work of a serial killer? Which well, way? I, I think so. I'm no expert on serial killers, but I can tell you in the early days of this investigation, of course, law enforcement, the FBI, the Indiana State Police, the Carroll County Sheriff's Department were looking for crimes in other locations that might have similar characteristics. But of course, the public doesn't know 
some of these similar characteristics. And even then, the characteristics they were looking for tended to be uh, more general things than the items I'm talking about. And I'm not certain of the exact significance of these things, but they are very unusual. As a former prosecutor, are you confident this case will be solved? That's the real question our audience has. Confidence is a difficult word. People ask me, do I think it will be solved? And I think it will be. But I can't give you strong reasons for that. I, I'm hopeful. You know, when people commit a horrifying crime, they feel compelled to confess. They feel compelled to brag. I can't help but think that the person who committed these crimes will talk to somebody at some point, or someone will realize, gosh, he's, this person said something to me that makes me uh, nervous, concerned about this. You know, when, if it's someone you care about, you'll think of all sorts of rationalizations to not believe they committed a terrible crime, but we know terrible crimes get committed. So I think that's a possibility. And in addition, I, I don't hope for this, but there's always the possibility that someone will be caught committing another crime as serial killers have sometimes been caught in this country and will confess to this crime here in Delphi, Indiana. Well, Godspeed uh, to you and all the things you're doing now. I appreciate your sharing insights.